And then... Edmont. Sir. When you pull the curtain behind, you see Kristen's yep. badly burned body. And like, there's a charcoal smell in the air, even. You can see the sheets that he's laying on are badly soiled. His eyes are open, and he's breathing raggedly. And he re- looks up at you, and then Ekon. Ekon, he reaches up with one of his disfigured arms. I almost saw. I couldn't. And then he breathes his last. Uh, <clears throat> Ekon is going to perform the ritual that... Uh... Vladen taught him for redeeming the souls of the apparently irredeemable. Okay. Is anybody else doing anything in this room while this ritual is performed? Evie will Evie be will. a witness. Victor's just watching. Yeah, I sure. think we're yeah. all just going to quietly watch. You complete the prayers and spread the salts out in a circle. Or whatever it was. I don't know if we had established details for it. That was 60 sessions no, ago. No, there was a couple. Uh, yeah, there was like some components we had to get. But other than that, I don't think we could... And as you complete this ritual, the tower begins to crumble around you. Uh, guys. Need to clear out. <laughs> it just starts to run. Uh, yeah. Anyone going to take his body? This seems like inappropriate. Mm. Brother, let's go. Orson, grab his body. We'll, we'll make sure he gets a proper rest. Okay. Mm. Let's make sure we visit the door on the way out to make, get everyone out of here. Orson pulls the body up over his shoulder in a fireman carry and realizes it's light. One of the legs is missing above the thigh. And his body is very withered, as though it has not received proper nourishment in a long time. So Orson has no difficulty slinging this corpse up over his shoulder, carrying it down the stairs, back into the room with the pool. Everybody continues to make their way down. Yep. Yep. Uh, I suppose, like, we should. Are we gonna like? We're making the trips to like free everybody that we've locked yeah. in rooms, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, so we're yeah, we're we're saying. We're, so, like, insert Metroid escape theme here. <laughs> we're saving, saving the animals. animals. Okay. Dun, 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 what about these dun, two dun, closed doors? As you pass, uh, them I'm gonna hit with them with a dispel magic. Which one? Sorry. Uh, hold on, let me make sure I actually have the slot. I've got one... I've got two Dispel Magics, so let's okay. hit the first one. And then see if we can get it open after that. Yeah, give that a roll. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast Guidance on myself before doing this, because Dispel Magic is not concentration, and it probably doesn't matter. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's only a seven. So let's try a second Dispel Magic. On the same door or the second door? Let's try the same door. Uh, that Dispel Magic is a 26, so okay. 16 full Dispels and lower. And I'm sorry, was this the north or the south door here? Uh, I'm going on the north. Okay. It opens up into a small room. Uh, it looks like a bed chamber, but it also looks like it has not been used in some time. Uh, inside, there is illuminated with a torch the bed at the far wall with rushes on the floor. As you step in and look to the left, you see a locked footlocker. Uh, Orson, grab that. Uh, brother, can you carry the body? Yeah. What's Orson's strength score? Uh, it's like, it, it's at least 18, but I think it's 20. Okay. Let me double check. 20 is good, but it's not care, not carrying a f- full footlocker weighed down with goods, on a unaided good. He could drag it, but it's going to slow him down. The tower is crumbling from behind you. Can we uh, have a second person also carrying it? 
Any volunteers? I mean, I'll I'll grab the other end with both hands. My score strength score is not a uh, not twenty or eighteen or whatever. But uh, I can cast levitate on the damn thing. There you go. With my la but my absolutely last spell slot. Yeah, if you cast levitate on it, then you can just pull it behind you. I uh, have nothing left. Those I am on people. my next last slot, and I've got another dispel magic using a fourth level slot on the other door. Okay. Should I roll it? If you'd like. Uh, while they are dealing with that thingy, I'm going to get a dispel magic of 21. Okay. And very similar to the room you just looked in. It looks like it's a bedchamber of some, site, some type. It looks like it's been unused in a while, and you see another heavy laden footlocker in the corner. Can we add that footlocker to the... Uh... To the, you just want me to open it for the levitation. You have time to open it. Probably, I don't want to take Victor to open the footlock. Oh, actually, hold on. The tower is crumbling around you. You don't have much time to do anything at all. Hold on, let me let me actually look up at levitate, because like, can I uh, can I? No, okay, never mind. It doesn't upcast. I was seeing if it upcasted, but it doesn't. Or can we add this to the levitation? I cannot. Okay. How long? How long would it take Victor to open the locker? Uh, one action, but I'm keeping track of how many actions you guys are using as you move down. Well, that's like six seconds. So Victor's gonna open the foot locker. Since Akon is slow, he is going to start making his way down. Um, while you're doing that. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna kick on the boots of flying. That's a thirty. Thirty. Yeah, you pop the lock on the foot locker. Uh, Give me a dexterity saving throw, please. Uh, that's a 29. That was a what? 29. 10 points of fire damage as you discharge the small fire trap embedded in the locker. Okay, what's inside? Many, many, many coins. And... Some randomly determined magic items. I will throw... Uh, I'll see what he's doing, and I'll throw him the bag of holding, and I'm going to continue to make my way downstairs. So, Victor, you have my bag of holding. We will throw any items in the bag of holding. Inside the locker are a carefully packed suit of scale mail. A small, maybe about one foot long, ivory rod with no adornments. A gilded helmet. And a jeweled goblet. All four of these items are magic, and in addition, there are thousands and thousands of coins. Genie yells Copper, at you to leave. silver, and gold. Genie yeah. yells at you to leave the coins, throw the rest in the bag, get the hell out. Yeah, Victor puts the items in the bag, puts in like. You throw the rest in the bag. What's that? So into the bag, you're loading up the scale mail, placing the rod, the helmet, the goblet. Yes. Yes. I need yeah. a Constitution saving throw. And I need I need Genie to roll percentile dice. Oh God, Genie, I'm sorry. It's almost like he planned through this, right? I didn't. I just rolled a random item on the table. That's a ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. Yeah. That was Victor. A five, as you drop the goblet into the bag, it and the bag are both instantly destroyed. Oh my God. What? It all of the bag's contents explode out in all directions, clattering around the room. How'd you do on your constitution save, Victor? <laughs> five, but he's just going to have an aneurysm instead. You said five? Yeah. <laughs> Eleven points of force damage as the exploding bag throws you backwards against the wall. 
Uh, so what all <laughs> the the sound of the blast on the stairs is immense and the tower is already shuddering and rocking victor the good news is this the blast blew a hole in the side of the wall throwing a shower of these translucent scales outward uh including no small amount of the bag's contents what all was in there everything uh, bro alcohol. bed rolls crow my bed roll uh, crowbar a cask of fine barovian wine rations uh parchment all the books we found. Uh, ten flasks of oil, a block of tackle, ten empty flasks, a grappling hook, a shovel. Steel mail, ivory rod, gilded helm. Yeah. Ed, can I pick up the shovel? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm going to pick up the shovel and I'm going to start shoveling everything we can out of that hole. Half of the items in the, that were in the bag, including the other three that he just placed in there, you can recover. The other half will just be lost in the debris of the tower. I will let you go through the list and choose what you've lost. Uh, I mean, most of the stuff that Genie is carrying is just general adventuring gear. In sure. The bag. But, so, so secure so, the good stuff. The books. Yeah. So, secure, and, you here's what, let us know that you've blown a hole in the tower. All you hear is a loud explosion. And then Victor is screaming out for Genie. Victor... <laughs> Victor Edmont should, starts ushering you out of the out of the room. But, and meanwhile, while all Victor this is happening, flying. Yeah, Evie yeah. is down yeah. here yeah. telling uh, Alanis that he needs to get the hell out right now. So I'm not worried about the. Uh, yeah, we're like, uh, we'll like she, Jeannie yells back. We'll worry about it later. Save what you can. And, so are like, Victor and Ekon flying out of the hole, or are they continuing down? Yeah. Like yeah, you're, I'm you're slow. I think I'm the slowest person in the party, so flying yeah. out of the hole is way better for me. So here's I what I need: a couple of magic items along the way. Your, okay. your standing mirror is in was in the bag, by the way. Yeah, uh, that's that's something I need. So okay. here's the here's oh, here, the checks here, here, that I need. What I'm... I need okay. two strength saving throws from anybody not going out the window with flying boots. If you're going down the stairs and you're going to exit the tower down through the front door, I need two strength saving throws. Can Edmont go out the window and not use falling boots? You can jump out the window. How far down is it? Uh, what floor are you on here? Let me take a look. Maybe got an 11 and a 7. I think you're about halfway-ish down the tower. How many feet Maybe is 80 that? or 90 feet. Uh, Genie will vortex warp Eevee to the ground. Okay. Uh, like, without even, like, uh, like, unless she, like, and, like, I will do it forcefully if she tries to... Like, I'm just going think. to... And here's what I want to do. I want to... as all, Along the way, I'm stopping Orson. I am grabbing the footlocker that is levitating, and I am shoving it out no, the no. window and then telling Orson to get on it. No, no, no. no, no, no. To levitate. No. Like, slowly. No, I'm not. I'm There's a lot of argument to... going on right now. I'm going to vortex warp Orson down, too, and then I'm going to ride the, the thing okay. down. I can't... I can't ride the... Yeah, so... Vortex warp. So I can't yep. vortex warp myself. If you are escaping out the hole, you will not have a op, you will not have the chance to save anybody else who is currently inside the tower. Oh, that's a good point. Evie's Evie's already down here saving this guy. Okay, so Evie uh, is going down the stairs. Go ahead, yes, it, go ahead and put Evie on the stairs here, so I can see that she's not going out the hole. And I ask if it's faster to fly down outside of the tower and come back into the entrance because I know there's some guys. Like again, I'm just I'm slow. Like I'm faster flying. I'm going to say if you escape out this hole, you don't have the opportunity to save anybody else in the tower. Okay. You're going to have to make two strength saving throws to go down the stairs and out the front door. You're going to have to make four strength saving throws if you're going to take detours on the way down. Ekon would just be a liability. So they'll grab the magic items that matter yeah. and fly out the window. Okay. Victor grabs whatever Ekon can't as well as a couple of pockets full of gold and then goes out the window. I think you should bring Orson with you if you want to. If anyone's going down, they should bring Orson with them. Uh, so so Evie got a 16, an 11, and two sevens on her four saving throws. Okay. But she's fast. Yeah. So most of you um, float down to the base of the tower. Or levitate, or fly, or... Wall run, I guess. Edmund has that option. <laughs> I do. Forgot monks could do the, that. 
the reason why I was saying that is I was going to try and shovel out as much of much of the coin as I could until yeah. it uh, out of the window until it got too unstable for me to stand on it. Yeah. Then I would run down the wall and then slow fall damage uh, through the fall damage. We'll roll to determine how much gold you guys save later. Okay. Here's what occurs. You guys get down to, and as you get down to the base, you see that the walls and a lot of the uh, scales holding the tower in place are coming loose at the base. The front door of the tower is already partially collapsed. The floor above had already crashed down in. And you hear terrible crumbling noises above you as the tower is just telescoping down. And Evie has not yet come out. Uh, <laughs> Jeannie is going to use her ring of the spell restore ring to give herself a third level slot and then I guess she's she's fixing to get ready to go back in after her sister if, like you're going to have to physically restrain her I'm going back in uh, well then in that case haste Haste on Edmont. If he's going back in. Okay. Edmont, you're not going back in the front door because it's collapsed in. But after a few moments, a hole, if you look around, you can see holes in the side of the tower. The map at this point is essentially useless. How much movement does haste give you? It doubles his movement. <clears throat> so I have 50 feet of movement. Yep. Which haste doubles to 100. Plus I can key point. I can key point the dash for five rounds. Okay. Uh, Plus regular dash. Yes, you can do 300 yeah. feet around for five rounds. Give me. F- yeah. And that's how that's how long haste after that five rounds haste ends. Uh, no, it lasts a minute. No, after those five rounds, he's out of key points. He's out of key Killing. points. Got it. Let's, I'm out of key points, so I still let's, got movement. Let's resolve those five rounds first, then. Go ahead and give me five investigation checks. These Take checks are on the first one. These checks are going to be made at disadvantage if you're moving at your full speed. You can move really fast, but you can't search at the same speed. You said I have guidance on the first? Uh, how about uh, a 12 a 12 yep okay give me another one uh, 19 19 yep going up what presumably was once a stairwell but now is more of a ramp is these loose translucent scales are just starting to slide in and over each other. It's very difficult to keep your footing. Uh, but part of the section of the wall to your left falls away, tumbling down into a cavity beneath you. And you manage to find Evie's body buried in the rubble. That was on the second of five rounds that you have scoop up her body and get the hell out of there give me a strength check to dislodge her from the rubble can i make a dark power check instead and werewolf out yeah you absolutely can of course werewolf out is always the correct option uh, that's a 19 on the dark power check Ooh, okay good so you turn into a werewolf and- with exceptional strength and now I have strength. <laughs> now I actually have uh, an 18 strength. Which means I get a plus four to this roll. 19. No problem. I mean, you reach in and you dig out handfuls of the uh, material and thrust it aside. Is Edmont trained in medicine? Edmont is not trained in medicine. Yeah, then you pull Evie's body out of the rubble. You don't see anyone else around corpses or survivors you've got two more or no three more key points by my count yep and then i am getting the hell out of this building with dv okay give me a strength saving throw please 
He just freaking busts through like at the wall. Kool Aid Man. <laughs> Kool Aid Man's his way out. What's <laughs> four to this? Take a big sip of Kool Aid and it's all werewolf fur. A twenty. Yep. Difficult to maintain your footing on the way out as the rest of the tower is coming apart ahead of you, and soon it'll just be a giant pile of this uh, translucent material. Edmond emerges from around the corner in his werewolf form, holding Evie in his arms. Uh, Ekon, you're trained in medicine, yes? Yeah, uh, I think it's pretty obvious she's not breathing by looking at her. She's breathing very shallowly. Evie has oh. zero hit points. Oh, that's fine. I, I've got a healing word left. I have okay. exactly one. Jeez. I thought she was dead. Um, go ahead and get 14 hit points back. That is my last spell slot. And Evie comes yeah. alive with a gasp as her eyes open up, unable to have saved anyone from the tower. She's breathing very raggedly. And she looks up and she sees that it's Edmund that saved her. And she kind of just... Is a werewolf. Yeah, she... But even if he's... Even though he's a werewolf, she kind of just rests her head against his shoulder. And just kind of hugs him. And after a few more moments, the crumbling of the tower comes to a stop. And it's just a pile of rubble. But you did rescue some gold and a footlocker. I lost my bag of holding. <laughs> that part was very fun for me, I will say. That was funny. I enjoyed that. <laughs> so, like, uh, I, I can't be mad at you because you did roll on a... On a uh, on, a, on a magical item yeah, uh, table. Yeah, hold on there. I didn't... I can't think of what item that is. To well, I'm sure none of you could have screwed up worse than I did. <laughs> Probably some kind of goblin with never-ending something or other. And Edmont... Edmont lets go of Evie and collapses over to the side, rolls over and, like, just... He's, he's like... He's beat after the haste wears off. Kind of has this Yamcha pose going on here. <laughs> uh, Victor. Oh, come on, it's not that bad. Give me a percentile yep. check, please. I don't say the metal dies at 10 points. You what? Metal dies 10s. Oh, okay. That's an 18. 18. Bear with me just one second. Only for a second, huh? The bear is fleeting. It's a very it's fast bear. Right. Victor. Yeah. Uh, in gold and silver coins, shoveling is, and you and Edmont together, shoveling as many as you can before having to bail out the window. Uh, 1,170 pieces of gold. You can split that up however you want between gold and silver. And you still have the other footlocker to look forward to. Yes, which I guess after making sure everyone's alive, Victor will go and open it. He's going to check him for traps first. Oh, there's a magical trap on it. It's going to discharge a fireball if you try to unlock it. Oh, can you, can you disarm the trap? You could dispel it with dispel magic. I'm taps. Well, you... we can rest, and then we can do it. Mm -hmm. Or can, can you heal, can you heal so, me? So, like, Genie's like, I where's taps. Genie's like, where's my bag? What What did you do? Victor, what? what did you do? Victor, what did you do? Victor just looks up to where the tower was. <laughs> Genie, well, my strewn, was in the bag and now it's here, so... Strewn all over the lawn in front of the tower are just all the stuff you've been putting in your... There's a coil of rope and... I actually, it, like, emptied most of everything out of my bag. Like, it's not, like, full of just random, like, liquor where I had, like, an unspecified, irresponsible amount of liquor from, like... I, that's all... I took all of that out because, you know, there's a weight limit. But, uh, like, she's gonna look at you go... you like... Jeannie, your 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 bag is a never ending. Uh, it did would, you at least get the stuff that was in the the thing? Yeah, I grabbed it on the way down. You're gonna point you around it. <laughs> okay. So I will just is, was just... the goblet among the things, or was that destroyed? That was destroyed <laughs> with the as soon as he put the goblet in the bag. What? Just uh, out of curiosity, real quick, what was that magic item they did? Because I'm only aware of a few, like the 
the handy it's a handy haversack, another bag of holding, and a portable hole. I rolled a well of many worlds. And I don't like, even know what that does. Never heard of that one. Never heard of that one. Basically transports you from one plane to another, so it's not the kind oh, of thing you want to put in a bag of holding. Yeah, it's not very useful for us. Trash in this world. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Darkon would have thought it was cool. Or Darkwood. The thing about bags of holding is they're described one way, like in the 5th edition magic items. But what a bag, I don't know if it still is skinned this way, but what a bag of holding actually is, is it opens into a pocket of the astral plane yeah. that you have yeah. access to. I don't think it mentions that in the 5th edition book, but because, just because I've, I'm, a, I'm a planescape boy from way back, like every bag of holding to me is just, it's, I, it's a little pocket of the astral plane that you carry around, and sometimes I, that causes problems. I will say that, like, you have canonically shown that the bag of holding does not function the same way in this area in, in, where we're at. That's true. It did make stuff rain from the sky. Because oh. <laughs> I, mean, I, like, I tried to have done the difference between non and extra dimensional spaces, and I forget which one the bag of holding is. Yeah, so it, it's it's fine. I'm not like I said, like I can't even be mad at you about that at all. <laughs> it's, probably, it's not even but... the first bag of holding. I feel like I'm destroyed. <laughs> That was I, a full on net hack moment. Oh, I've oh, raged. No, I've, what have we done? I've rage quit some net hack runs. Fat fingering my bag of holding. All right. Uh, I need to. Look at a random spell calculator. I used to have one of these. All right. Bookmark. So once we rest, Akon could just teleport us home, right? Yes. Uh, so what? Us, right? yeah. What are we doing with the other yeah. footlock? Taking it with you? Well, we can we can either open it here if you want to take it back. I mean, let's after take a long rest. I'll just cast a spell magic and we'll open it. Yeah, after a long rest, you're, I uh, can you're gonna just... hike outside of the immediate fallout range of the tower, set up camp for the night, and we'll in the morning we'll cast some spells. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Yeah, and I have a six level spell that will literally just put us in our temple with one word so so back to the village then yep all right mm -hmm. unless anyone is looking forward to walking oh i need i don't have this save i need to go to immigrant.com yeah i thought we were i thought we were gonna have to find a way to get contact for kelp Stravi to get us back home that would they help us or that or that not the or that or the not the kelp Stravi, the freaking the vistani Vistani, yeah. Hey, Destel, I have it in my notes that you have all of the, the Fireball Scrolls. Is that correct? We yes. have, like, n nine total? Yeah, exactly. you're a responsible number of Fireballs. You handed them to me at some point. I don't remember why, but they are on my character sheet. Okay. Yeah. So, nine total? Uh, I, my, mine says four, so I think I must... Right, I split them. I split some. Yeah, okay. I have five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, so I have five in my Scroll Bandolier, and you have four. Gotcha. So... Erase all the junk off the table. Put Queen table. There. there we go. All right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and resolve what's left in the other footlocker. Presuming you guys are able to get the other one open and heal the damage or whatever. Mm. And then I think she can start casting identifies, right? You have the means to just identify all these over the course of however long, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The three items that you salvaged from the first footlocker, the one that Victor exploded... Which, by the way, was not even the most squandering of treasure that has occurred at the flump table. Like, Actually, no. I think that saved us. I think I would have died in the tower if I hadn't been able to fly out the hole. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, I think a lot of us would have died. Yeah. The suit of scale mail is a plus one suit of scale mail. The gilded helmet is a plus two helmet. And the ivory rod is a rod of resurrection. Oh my gosh! Yeah, this was a that big th leap. this was a big boy haul. Uh, plus one. What's a plus hey. helmet in five E? Just wear the helmet and get plus two to your armor class. Does it just replace the helmet that comes with your armor? Yeah, that's fine. 
I rolled okay. a, a, a suit of like enchanted full plate, but it's like I can't fit that in this box as I've described it. There's already a suit of armor in there. <laughs> it could have just been hanging out on the on the wall or something like, like that. See that I'm wondering how that interacts with my unarmored monk defense. It doesn't because if you're wearing a helmet, you're not unarmored. Okay, fine. Victor, Victor could wear a helmet. Victor could wear a helmet. What is it heavy? Is it it's heavy yeah. armor. Oh, now he's forcing them. Yeah, it's just, it's basically... I mean, like, a horse. full helmet, like, with a visor and yeah. a spot That's to put a, a big plume behind it. Helmet just... also heavy? Yeah, right? Yeah, but it's, like, 14 AC. It's not good. Okay. I think it might be medium. Maybe Maybe it's yeah, it's, it's, it's medium armor. I'm already, I'm already wearing a... Yeah, I'm wearing a breastplate. I'm good. Okay. The other box contains 7,000 gold. In gold and silver Ooh. coins. That's nice. It contains a file of universal solvent. And two spell scrolls. Ekon, you know both of these scrolls because they are cleric spells. One is Earthquake. The other is Holy Aura. I've just written those down on my character sheet. I hope no one of mine's. I can't Fine. use them, so yeah. That Rod of Resurrection is really good, because we don't even need to know that spell to use it, right? Uh, it says it requires attunement by a cleric, so it's an Ekon-only device. Okay. Five charges. Uh, expend one charge to cast the Resurrection spell, and it regains one expended charge daily at dawn. Jesus. Oh, wow. That's... We don't have to ever worry about dying again. Oh, no, no, or dies, or we all die. Much more, much more importantly, it also casts heal. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, I guess, does someone else want an Ayun Stone with 100 hit points in it? No, because there's a bad thing that happens. Yeah. I mean, there may be a time when we want someone to have that, so let's just bag that. Does now. Orson want an Ayun Stone with 100 hit points in it? I'm already... Fully attuned. I've already got three attunement slots pulled up already. Orson probably does. He does. If I gain one level, I get two more attunement slots. <laughs> and... Anyway, take the ion stone off my list because I'm attuning to that rod. Okay. All right. I'll just put. Uh, where is it? I stuff. I'll just, just put that in other. I'll uh like during a long rest. I will take the uh. Because I can attune. Uh, Victor, you've lost your winged boots. What? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Victor just wakes up one day and steps out the second floor window and falls on his face. He needs a bag of holding. I'm sorry. Yep. My boots. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you'd already permanently crafted that one, hadn't you? Yep. So now, I but... am. Awarding everybody one blip for successfully avoiding Chris and turning into a Dark Lord. Yay! That's, sounds like he was pretty close. Yeah. Was it Was it that there's good in this world, Mr. Frodo? Does so that do it? The way that the encounter worked is you were going to have three scenes to kind of direct the course of conversation to determine his inclination, which way he was going to go. If he had decided to make a different decision this time around to not warn anybody or to take advantage of the situation. The mists would have claimed him and you guys would have never found him again. They would have spun him off into his own realm. After those three rounds and Evie got there a little earlier because she just knew what was happening. But after those three rounds, the dark forces were trying to uh, remove you from the equation by sending avatars of death after you. Which could not have killed you, by the way. Redu reduction to zero hit points would have just removed you from the scene. But I'm still giving you experience for the three that you've killed, so that's good. Sweet. It is good. Well, that was exciting. So are we ending early today because of that? No. We still have an hour to handle... Because uh, downtime stuff for the big finale adventure. Yeah, Any I other think... last-minute things... However long you guys want to take to 
prepare or any allies or favors you want to call in or bring to bear. But you no longer feel Crescent's presence in the world and you are no longer harassed by red priests or firebirds. Speaking of which, I've got an egg in the tower in the middle of a magical circle. Yes. Does that, do we want to work, do we want to resolve that now or? What are you doing to resolve it? Um, does the egg hatch of its own? It does not. Okay. Chris uh, had to near, had nearly kill himself to summon that thing. Uh, Ekon, give me an arcana check. Okay. I feel like if that thing can be unleashed on Aslan, that's probably good. Can I assist? No. Uh, that's uh, an arc. Yeah, you can assist, actually. Of... Genie, th oh. this would be a, kind of in Genie's wheelhouse, too. Uh, take uh, plus that... five. Yep. So that's an arcana of 27. And a plus and a d4. Sure. Kristen was in a very sorry state having summoned these creatures, but he summoned two of them in a very short period of time. You don't know the exact uh, ritual or schematic to, to hatch this creature and bind it to your will, but if it's done carefully, you don't see any reason it should be different than summoning than any other summoning spell. It would just take some time to research it, figure out how to do it, and then properly make sure that the ritual is done. Kristen's downfall was that he overreached. He, he, he saw that he needed two of these creatures. Uh, yeah, that's what Ekon is immediately locking himself away, working on that, and is trying to figure out how to bring this thing back into the world. Okay, so Ekon wants to summon a phoenix. How would everybody else like to spend some of their rest time? Everybody can go ahead and take the benefits of a long rest, by the way. As several yeah. days pass, nothing's pressing on your on your time. Um, uh, we can medicine. Genie. Uh, Genie wants to use all of, like, our, like, do I get the sense that we're getting ready to move? Or, like, it's it's time. Like, we've got to move on Aslan soon. Well, what is our plan? Are we going to move on Aslan? Are we still trying to find a way home? Or how, what exactly are we doing? I don't think anything has presented itself at this time. Not at this moment. You guys had returned from... I mean, you just completed the task that Aslan had given to Ekon. And mm -hmm. the threats of the Red Priests. And the Hand of Fire is wiped from Dark. Uh, yeah, Evie still has an outstanding task she needs to deal with with Zakiel, but I'm not sure if that's going to be downtime or if we're actually going to have a scene with that. What is it? Uh, well, she, she wants to bring him in to our village in secret by faking his death. <laughs> what does that look like? I have I have poisons that can fake his death. So you have you know, like write him a letter and tell him that this is what's up. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming he's going to argue because that's just what he's like. Well. No, he also told you that when it was time to go, just give him a heads up, and he was ready to okay. do what needed to be done. Yeah, so I the mean, question people... is, what is Zakiel's role in this fight against Azalin Rex? Uh, I would... I have a corollary question that might help Saul. Uh, mm -hmm. What has he... Like, has he got... Uh, like, if we get word, has he had any uh, major uh, breakthroughs with that book? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I need to talk to Jeannie about this, because, Jeannie, I gotta be honest with you, I am, like, 95% sure that the reason Aslan is beefing with him is because he was supposed to give you to Mordenheim, and he fucked it up. No. Like, he already gave me to Mordenheim. Like, I, I, I like, like, Jeannie's got a counter-argument in this. I'm pretty sure, like, because Jeannie had that kind of discussion with him and saw through... She had that. She made that thir like thirty insight check. She's gonna <laughs> like. I think she disagrees, and she's gonna say no. He's looking for something. He wants something, and Zachwiel didn't. Was not a path. He was cutting his losses. I, I don't. Have... I don't think it had anything to do with this. I think it's he saw the lake is a potential way to get the thing he wanted. He gave Zachriel, uh the pretty words and the, in the, in the piece of paper that said, you're in charge over it, but I need this. And then they, they made the, 
the decision to that it wasn't worth that. Uh, it wasn't worth I any kind of effort being put into it. Well, here's the thing. If Zachwiel didn't screw that up, he would have put him in charge of some other job. He gave me another job after I did what he told me to do. I think he did give him another job. I think he his other job was to be bait for you. To be bait for me to do what? What he said. Like, also, like, I kind of get the feeling that, like, maybe it wasn't necessarily his decision. Like, it was his decision, but also, like, he didn't, like, it wasn't, it was the people he sent down there to make the, uh, assessment that decided to pull out of, pull out of Zach Wheel's thing, and then they haunted his butt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can I do a quick, uh. We get a quick family meeting to make sure we're all on the same page here going into this downtime. Sure. Yeah. I don't realize it's necessary after like, you know, half a week of his research. Mm -hmm. Get everyone together. Mm -hmm. All right. So the time we spent in Chrisom's fever dream has only renewed my opinion that we need to get home and do something about, you know, everything that happened there. So That's is the reason. going strategy that the only way out is through Aslan? I, we haven't made any progress making trying any other way so far. Okay, then I'm on board. Uh, there are three avenues of getting more help that I can think of. Uh -huh. One, I am going to work on seeing if I can't get this uh, phoenix to reemerge and help us. Okay, the phoenix I feel like is more of like a Godzilla. You unleash it and then it does what it wants. It's an intelligent creature, so I'm hoping that we can make a... I'm hoping to have a conversation with it more than simply... Uh, as a Econ, you are, you are pretty attack. fairly confident that if you can hatch that egg safely when the creature comes out, it will be bound to your will, at least okay. for a period of time. Um, two, there is still a agent of air, an angel, trapped yep. in... Uh, Mordenheim's realm? Morden yeah. We want him... Lamordia. Lamordia. He wanted to destroy Aslan. Uh, I feel like those are both my wheelhouse, but I feel like... So I'm a little stretched uh, in terms of resources. Like, I'm going to have to work on both of those. The last thing that I can see that we can bring to bear against him would be um, the uh, the realm itself. Like, look, the realm itself hates everyone, right? It hates everyone who's here. Like, the world hates us. And he's mm. been here so long, the world must hate him so much... It hates him, but it, it also seems to serve him. It drops, like, terrible dungeons in front of us. So there has to be some way to get the realm itself to help expel him or destroy him. It seems I like don't, it all at once. He bent to his will, though. I don't think... Do you think that doesn't make it resent it? I'm, I'm beginning to believe that this place has a will. I don't I, think it wants to get rid of him. I think this place... Uh, we. I think we've kind of come to the conclusion uh, through just observations and stuff. This place is... It's not... And his desire to get out. This place is his prison. It's, it's a predator that wants to play with its prey. Uh, yeah. Long like, as it, long as it can before like, it devours them. It, it. We just stop the the world for or this whatever these forces are from doing that to Crisson. So the thing is, is like if he, the thing, the world might come to might do s weird stuff to, to it, it might resent us mm -hmm. saving Chrisom like that, but it also might decide that uh, screw Aslan Rex more. I don't think we can count on that. I don't think there's any way we could weaponize that. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we could weaponize. It, but it's I didn't, something I didn't have, have a good plan for that either. I just wanted to bring it to attention. Those, to me, are yeah. the three major forces other than some of the more obvious ones like uh, like Oakwood, I'm... or maybe yeah. the eldest that we would have at our Disposal. I mean, the, the, the eldest is going to want something in return. I don't know what it's going to have. I have some lores I can cash in. We can see what comes out of that. This this might be more than just this. The the rest of this session to get through all the stuff we want to get through. That's okay. We'll just okay. we'll go for as long as we can do today. It's fine. Okay. I'm used um, to flunk finales stretching out over many multiple sessions. Okay. So yeah. my, my thought is, it may be possible to get the Celtistravi on board because here's what I would think. 
Arcadius' clan, they're the lowest clan. If they beat, help beat Azlebrex, now they're the highest clan, and the other clans do what they say. Ginny holds her hand up and says, Evie, she says, we're not going to beat Aslan Rex. Well, we need not help. not in a straight stand up fight. No, but if they, they like, maybe we're we're not like like she she like, says no, Evie. I need you to understand. I need you to say it out loud. We are not killing Aslan Rex. Absolutely, I one hundred percent agree. Do you, do like you, she looks, she gives you like Jeannie gives you a side eye. This is that conversation we had in Discord the other day about like like Jeannie's <laughs> like like the best revenge we could get is. Uh, the, the best revenge is, like, breaking free and living well, and, like, you want to get the second best revenge instead? Okay, so, here, my thought is, we bring Zaquiel Dantes in here to help make the magic mirror that we want to imprison Aslan in. That's what I think we should get so, him to do. So, so is your goal we're going to march on Aslan's castle with a giant army, bring him out in ropes and throw him in a mirror? No, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how we're going to approach that yet. I think we need to sit down and brainstorm that. Uh, there's a couple avenues I think we could use that would throw him off. We, the, I absolutely do not think that the way to win is to walk up to him and roll initiative. I think if that happens, we've already lost. That's just not going to go well. He needs to be... Ideally, I would... My ideal scenario is we unleash a series of successively, increasingly serious um, situations that he has to expend resources to deal with. So by the time it gets down to, uh, to him facing us, he's tapped a lot of his stuff and we can do what we need to do i think we're not under a time crunch right right so i think step one is we gather information like i mm -hmm. we're all kind of at the point where like aslan is obviously not having the best our best interest at heart and he, he he's the only one actively that we've seen that is actively researching a way to get out of this hellhole i agree That's so why I, want his I i I do, I do kind of agree with you there. I think our best chance for an escape route is through Aslan Rex. I also but, think that if we get something of Aslan's that's very powerful and useful, we can possibly trade that to Strahd von Zarevich. And uh, then he can he's, he's, a, he's a witch. Maybe we can find his flackery. Do we know what that is? You had, no. you said you had lore to cash in, Saul. Oh, okay. What is that? I'll cash one in for that. <laughs> so how much lore do you actually have to cash in? Okay, I have 11 pieces of lore for the mirror or for Aslan. Okay. That's what you said. I could use it for one or the other. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Fredericton had called Aslan the ancient dead. Yep. And he drew a very strong distinction between being ancient and merely mm -hmm. being old. Mm -hmm. He's like primordial. He's from the before time in the long, long ago. In your research, you've come across a way for a, a powerful magic user. Magnus got out the yard and he had to almost attack another dog. No. He jumped the fence. He did? He said, yes, he jumped the fence. Did he attack the dog? Now I'm interested in this dog story. <laughs> uh, you become aware of this magical ritual magic yep. use, very powerful magic users use it to extend their lifespans beyond mortal reckoning and what they do yep. is they tie themselves to a device called a phylactery uh -huh. that's one piece of lore okay so this if he has that this would be to your mind considered a highly abomination like a highly abominable act mm -hmm. very very unseely but if we got that, I think Strahd Vodzerovich would be very interested in owning it. That would be hilarious to watch. Yeah, that yeah. Would, that, I, I kind of want to do that if, if things work out. We bind him in the mirror and then we give his phylactery to Strahd in exchange for a way out. I mean, he may not have that. We're pointing, he might be able to point us in the right direction. Further questions? Uh, okay. Um, let's Wait. see what other Lorcan I can cash in. Like... Uh, the, but, like, it could be anything. It could literally be anything. Well, it, it'll probably be something important. It or, also could be not something not important. Okay, like, so, it's something that be well guarded and well hidden. Okay, so I'm going to cash in another one for... Aslan Rex has fought a lot of people. Is, is there, like, stories about what we should be prepared to face and what we should be prepared to protect against? 
This is where your like research that. turns back to von Zotovich. Mm -hmm. Because for a century or more, they fought each other in open, warf open warfare, fielding armies at the borders between Darkon and Barovia, sending troops and spies and assassins back and forth. To this end, neither could get the advantage over the other. Azalin had larger forces, more soldiers that he could field, more people to draw from. But von Zarovich was a particularly skilled general and a, uh, a military tactician far and above anything that Aslan could bring to bear. So they don't fight wars like that anymore. But when Aslan did, his primary advantage was a soldier that fell on either side of the battle inside of Darkon's borders would raise again as a dead man and continue to fight for him. You can expect, if you're going to face Azalin head on, that there will never, ever be a limit to how many bodies with swords he can throw at you. Okay. I mean, fighting him head on, we don't want to do. He has literally infinite forces. Yes. Okay. So, like, that says to me that, like, our number one goal, like, at this stage should be leveraging what who our contacts for information yeah i'm gonna like, try expending my information to and see what holes we need to fill in okay okay so here's another piece coming at you i don't know what how much you're going to be willing to reveal about this but straw told us a very interesting story about the machine at the heart of aslan's castle the rift spanner mm -hmm. that he's been feeding souls to it for hundreds of years but we, that's not what we've observed. Aslan just kind of was going to seem like it was going to just kill Zakwe Eldantes and not harvest his soul. So I'm interested. I'm going to cash in a piece of lore. Does what Strahd told us fit with what Aslan has actually been doing? To this end, you managed to find in your research uh, a very, very ancient account of this device having been built before mm -hmm. and you come to well i'm not going to make a speculation as to what evie may or may not conclude but it's possible that Azalin built his device based on lore that he unearthed about this earlier one and as far as you can tell that device was used appropriately and it worked and doing so emptied it of all of the souls that was used, were being used to power it and destroyed the device so it could not be recharged. As for whether Azalin needs needed Zachwheel's soul or anyone in particular, uh, you couldn't say because there are differences between the two devices in the way that they're described. Uh, it could be that Azalin has improved on the schematic and found a better way to build it. It could be that it couldn't be built the same way twice or anything in between. For whatever reason, though, Azalin was not, did not need uh, Zachwheel in that manner. All right, cashing in another one. Is there a reason Aslan has not used it already? Because Strahd implied that was already charged enough to send Rowan Darkwood back home. And would there be some kind of consequence to using the machine? Aslan is exceedingly cautious and he is exceedingly patient. And really that's all the explanation you need. He will not pull the trigger on this device until he is certain it will work for him. All right. Okay, um, cashing in another. I have six left. Hi. What is Aslan's obsession with true names? True names can be used to bind souls to magical effects and energies. If you know a being's true name, you have control over it. This is typically used... Uh, it's typically something that mortal creatures don't have to concern themselves with because you don't have primordial connections the way that devils and celestials do. 
But Aslan likes to have them nonetheless. And Aslan is not his true name. Okay, pick Ash again other. How would I discover his true name? You would have to know more about his history than you do. Okay. This would involve... You... So it, this would involve research in the world where he originally came from. Well, oh. Rowan Darkwood might have information then. He might. I'm going to have to go have a talk with him then about a number of different things. I have asked myself many times over the course of this campaign, which of the two of them was in Greyhawk earlier. And I have not come to a decision. Because <laughs> either way, <laughs> feels vi- like... Darkwood's been on like the I've been through the universe three times start to finish <laughs> kind of story whereas Azalin is exceedingly ancient so yeah I'm not sure which one is older than the other and it sounds like Azalin's been around for so long that like humans didn't even exist yet well Azalin himself is human or was at okay. one time I apologize for the for the disruption is everything okay Everything seems okay. Good. Yeah. Okay, I have five pieces left. I think maybe I'm going to save those in case we need them to uh, create the mirror. Okay. I feel like the phylactery is the best avenue to pursue. Yeah, but we don't want if like if we destroy it, then that kills him, and we don't want to do that. No, it Not doesn't kill him. It, it like does it free him? It That's why you have to repair the mirror. Uh, my understanding of the way phylacteries work is they is basically if you kill the lich, they retreat into their phylactery and then regenerate. So basically, you have to destroy the phylactery first. This is out of character, but like mm-hmm. you destroy the the phylactery first, and then you can kill the, when you kill the lich, it's permanent. On this topic, you find contradictory, yeah, uh, evidence. It depends on the source that you're reading, and there's really no knowing of what might be done until you actually get your hand on the Horcrux. Yeah. Also, it probably is different depending on like what kind of lich you're talking about, because there's like at this yeah. point like seven different kinds. <laughs> okay. okay, so yeah, my thinking is we want to get Zachary Del Dante's in on making the mirror. We definitely want to get a hold of that angel. Uh, what else? Like, like, what are you hoping to like? Like, you're latched onto this mirror. What are you hoping the mirror does? imprisons him so that he does not ever bother us again because we know killing him won't work well to imprison him we have to release the uh like we would yeah well no he she she's talking about making a new mirror yeah the the old mirror we think of that one as like a proof of concept it works but it kind of sucks you can't move it around (laughs) it's easy to break the guy inside almost got out we need to improve on it like, you're talking about imprisoning something that is an order of magnitude more powerful than what's in the other mirror. Yeah. Uh, like, like, I'm not even convinced that that mirror can hold something like Aslan. You know what it sounds like Saul is saying to me? It sounds like he needs a 22-minute interval, so he's got to build a station that will fire at the sun. <laughs> Well, there's tw- there's twins of us. There's two of us. There- we're twins, and we're- we just came back from the Ash Place. We could call it the. Yeah, yeah you're right. That doesn't even work. <laughs> so you definitely, though, were agreed. You want to bring Zach Wheel in. Like he's going to have a role in this process. Yeah, yeah he's okay. just used. He has arcane. He. And you're going to accomplish this by writing him, letting him know what's up, and then you have this cockamamie scheme to fake his death. And well, yeah, tr- that's the only way Aslan's going to, you know, it, he, Aslan ordered me to kill him. So he needs to look like he died. Okay. I don't, I'm not 100% sure Aslan even is paying attention. I think he, I'm almost positive he has someone watching that town, both to make sure that uh, Zachwiel dies and to make sure that I follow his orders. It would be better if it looks to all appearances like we killed him. He didn't say kill him. He said, get him out of the border. Like, well, uh, what, I what think that's, an, that's a polite Aslanism for kill him. <laughs> no, I feel like the Aslanism would be kill him. So, or yeah, well, kill him or depose him or throw him out. We I, have. We could make we have, it look like he flee, but I think it's cleaner if it just looks like he's dead. Because he has that um, amulet that would make it so that he can't be scried. So it would just look like he's gone. Right. So we have. 
uh, our al our external allies in, that we uh, we have contacts with are uh, potentially we could hire uh, Ray and Sedgwick or uh, Van Richten. Getting Ray and Sedgwick to help with the mirror would be good, I think. I don't know if they'd be willing. Uh, well, like just tell them like we we're going like the the problem with telling anybody what we're doing. Yeah, I agree. is when they when they enter into Darkon, if they're outside of Darkon, Aslan will know. Yeah, that's the that's potentially a problem with the. Um, so so hold on one second, uh, like on Aslan and thing, but we have Zachwheel, we have Darkwood, we have uh the Knights of the Silver Branch or whatever the hell you called them. And then, uh, Firebird. We have a Firebird, and then we have an, a potential Angel. We have, we so, have, so we have a Sonny, too. Well, okay. So, so what Sonny I are not going to fight Azalut. I'll tell you no, that right now. No, no, no. Not no, directly. No. We use both things. I don't think we can really so, ca count on the Victor, for this. Victor has this wonderful thing where if he makes a dark power check, they'll do assassinations or trade disruptions or larceny or all manner of disruptive behaviors. Yeah, with that may be something we can help with because I feel like the way the only way we're going to sneer Aslan is we need to just overwhelm him with a ton of shit all at once. <laughs> that might be a good thing. So, like, put that on the list. Like, uh, mm -hmm. we'll, put, we'll put it ra a higher. Uh, what I'd love to do Make is like order a letter power. to compensate have... compensated anarchist from the uh Bastani, right? Like have them just cause disruptions. What I'd love to do is like send a letter to like to order one of those battleships from Ludendorff to just show up in Dark Darkon and Aslan has to go like what the fuck? <laughs> well, he gonna, something he's gonna have to deal with. I wanted to have to deal with like 20 increasingly dangerous things all at once. Listen, listen, there's an easy way to do that. You send a letter to Victor saying, hey, we got Jeannie's original body if you want to come take a look. Well, she can't leave. She can't She can't come here. She could send me. She might send a balance and pick it up. Uh, so this is what I, my proposal, like, so Ekon is concentrated on the bird of fire. And the angel. No, he can only do one or the, one or the okay. other. Okay. So, uh, I can write you a letter of introduction to the angel. <laughs> else wants to work on that. <laughs> well, we don't know where the angel is. Yeah. We have. We think we, we know we what realm it is. That realm. So I suggest my recommendation is we try to hire Van Richten to look into the angel. I'm on board with that. Yeah. Like, see if he's willing to do that, and if not, we maybe we could approach Cedric and Ray. So you're you're what you're saying is you want to. Get in touch with Van Richten. You say, we have yeah. this information about this bound celestial, but we don't right. know its location. Uh, what do you know about it? Uh, we name, know we know, know that... Name, and I've seen, the, uh, I've seen the cell on a scrying sensor. Okay. And we ha we know that it's in uh, Mordenheim's room. Lamordia. Yeah, Lamordia. That's that's it. And, and then we, we had some other lore that, like, Dustal, Dustal learned, like, when, when the during the riot okay but like just generally stuff like why the celestial was here like he came here like looking for a specific enemy and that kind of stuff and was captured and imprisoned but uh yeah and then like however much like Okay, so but, uh, Van, but, Van Richten's fee for this, we're going to say, is 1,400 gold. Give him, uh, yeah, sure, I don't mind, like, we, we just got 7,000. <laughs> this is, because, like, because uh, Edmont picked up my shovel and started shoveling. <laughs> this is a long-term project. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, like, we, we like, have time. This, yeah, this is not, uh, something... Okay. Yeah. Uh, that that's happening. Genie is. Well, that that's downtime action. Uh, so that's the angel, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So we need to square away a Zach wheel. 
Like, yep. we need to reach out to Zach. Like, like, can we say that uh, Genie? Like, like, is, is Zach Wheel still like regularly reaching out to Genie and doing uh, the the mind meetups, or has he stopped doing that? We can send him a send. That, that's up to Genie. Genie. I mean, Genie, like. Like we, I assume like they would get together and talk about nonsense and just hang out and play chess or something in the, in in the shared brain space. Yeah, as long as Genie like is maintaining that relationship. Yeah, Genie has been maintaining that relationship. Okay. I am also assuming that he has never given her a single piece of information about getting out of the mist and never will. He doesn't know anything. Like I've come yeah. to that conclusion. He doesn't know anything, but uh, he's pleasant and like, like. I would not describe yeah. as pleasant, but he's useful. Okay, so just... in terms of ways that we could, like, actually trick Aslan somehow, I have a couple potential ideas there. Well, before we move on to other ideas, let's resolve mm -hmm. Zach Wheel. Okay. Because the, the plan is, fake it, make it look like he died, fell out of his tower, mm -hmm. carried off by birds, whatever the plan mm -hmm. is, and you're going to sneak him back to Silverbow. Is that correct? Yes. And That's this is the with idea. the understanding that this is the beginning of the end game. Like, he's leaving his nice comfortable tower where he's in charge because uh, you're giving yeah, him it, the opportunity to go against yeah, that. It needs to look like I took over his plan and we'd make arrangements with him. Like when this is all over, you can go back to ruling it. I don't care. So do you not tell him that you're planning to escape Darkharn? No, he already knows that. Cause that was the, that was the argument that got him over to our side. He was like, I will destroy him. And I'm like, I don't think you can, but Here's I I use the best I use the whole like the best way to get revenge on Aslan is to have the thing he can't have. Okay. I think Defenses. he liked your idea because it meant he didn't have to do anything. Uh, no, he he genuinely said he was going to help us, and he started looking into that book. Uh, speaking of the book, has he made any progress with that? He doesn't mention it in letters. He doesn't mention it in your mind chess games. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to bring it up until he does, but... Okay. So... Because you never know who's listening. You put forth this cockamamie this plan to fake yeah. Zach Wheel's death. Mm -hmm. So his people believe that he's dead. Meanwhile, you squirrel him out onto the road, get him into Silverbow, and he now walks amongst your village. When this happens, 